Coming up in this edition of SportsLink's Be A Fan, we'll meet some of the soccer players from all over the world. And we're going to get a first-hand look at the craziness of the tailgate during homecoming weekends. All that and more coming at you next on SportsLink. Ball State Sports Link's Be a Fan is driven by Muncie Nissan. Hello and welcome to the October edition of Be a Fan, driven by Muncie Nissan. I'm Josh Blessing. And I'm Ashley Reed. We're excited to bring you some of the best stories in Ball State sports again this month. One of those being women's golfer Zoe Camus, who finds herself at Ball State after living in France. We'll also continue our newest segment, Sounds of the Game, and introduce you to field hockey's Marissa Wechter. Ashley, after you. College sports tends to bring athletes from all walks of life together, usually from the United States. But for the women's soccer team, there are six athletes that go worldwide. Check out this story produced by Brad Daly and Kevin Thurman, presented by Fox College Sports. It's, it's been a wonderful opportunity. I've always wanted to come to the States to play soccer. Everyone in Jamaica does, because the opportunities here are much more than it is home. So it's everyone's dream from Jamaica to come here and play college soccer and hope to move on from there. The international players that come over, uh, they're brought up with a different uh, kind of upbringing and uh, it enhances their love of the game and uh, just gives a different perspective on the way that they think about things and what they do. When I was playing for my club team at home, I played for Birmingham City um, and I got a text one day from my coach at the time saying, um, what are your grades and do you fancy a scholarship in the US? So I said, well, yeah, I do. <laughs> so yeah, ended up here. Um, I never really thought about studying in Germany, so then I spent a year uh, traveling through Australia and after that I uh, got the idea of studying in the States and now I'm here. My friends, I have some very good friends here who are from Muncie. Um, they've been going to Jamaica for a few years now and um, I came here one summer of 2010 to spend the summer with them and they recommended Ball State. They took me on a tour and I loved it instantly. To play in America for college was always my dream. I really wanted to go to study abroad. But and in Europe we have like an exchange program Erasmus but in, at my school, it's really hard to get in this program. So I just tried to get out by soccer and it worked, so I'm here. Um, you know, I've obviously been coaching for a while now and had numerous um, international students. It's something that uh, I'm used to and familiar with and therefore I can answer questions and, and give familiarity to that because of the experience that we've got and uh, just makes the transition a lot easier for the girls. The hardest part of being an international is how far away you are from your family. I really, well, I still struggle with that. Well, I mean, this year it's a lot easier, but last year was hard for me, just um, the long distance and being away from home. Um, I just really miss my family, and it was just hard to adjust because as a freshman, it's hard to adjust to the new players and new team and new environments. So just in general, it was just a hard adjustment, but now this year it's a lot better and a lot easier for me. Nikki, she's also from Canada, so when I knew she was coming here, it was really, it was easier knowing that there was someone I knew from back home, which made it easier to like adapt to the whole team. It was a really hard transition to make, of course, coming all that way. Um, but yeah, the place is lovely, the people are so, so friendly, so yeah, I found it, I found it tough, but um, yeah, it didn't take long. After the first semester, I was settled. When I just came to the state, it was very difficult being away from home, being here by myself. But to be honest, after that one year, um, I was okay. It was, just, it was as if I've been here all my life. I think we really do a good job of embracing them um, and, and just making sure they realize they have a true family around them, which is obviously the team and the coaching staff. The, the team is obviously uh, awesome. They're very friendly, like right from the beginning. And I'm, it feels like home. I mean, these girls are amazing. Like this, our, our soccer team is my family out here. Like 
I wouldn't have been able to go through this whole transition of moving to a different country without them. They are, I spend every waking minute with them pretty much. Um, yeah, we, we get on so well. Our chemistry here is amazing and I mean, I have it all to thank to them for being so supportive of me and everything. I have family here, they're not my blood family, but the people I've come to know, they've made me feel at home, so they've now become my family also. It's been a wonderful experience and I love it. And those six players features in, featured in that story that we just saw, seven combined goals between all of them with Nicole Pimbleton leading the charge with four. And Coach Roberts himself is from outside the United States. He actually came here from England, and you have to give him credit for getting that international talent. And that alone, the story of him coming from England to ending up here in Muncie, Indiana, coaching Ball State, uh, it's really just a story in itself. And we, we had a broadcast the other day, didn't we, for soccer? We did. Our first live TV broadcast ever from Briner Sports Complex. And uh, you were color, right? And I know you're a professional at uh, soccer, and you played it for years and years. So how'd it go? Oh, yeah. I played from uh, about age 5 to 12. So lots of experience there. But, I mean, it went well. The weather wasn't the best yeah. for us. I, was, uh, I wasn't able to be there, but you were up in the box, right? So you didn't have a problem. You weren't down there on the field, I right? was lucky, but the cor poor camera people and everyone else on the field, 48 degrees, rainy miserable it could have been better conditions but we won fair enough all right well we're going to switch gears to another international player this time from women's golf if it weren't for a family dinner zoe camus may have never began playing the sport of golf while her family remains back home in france camus has never felt overwhelmed with living by herself here's her in focus story produced by timmy fogarty chris kaczynski and aaron van auken My name is Zoe Camus. I'm from France. Um, I'm a grad student at Ball State. I remember my dad asking one time, like at dinner, if anybody wanted to come and play golf with him in the in the morning, and nobody answered. So I just said, "Yes, <laughs> why not?" So yeah, I just started playing with my dad at PGA National. So I just <laughs> basically, when you start playing there, you just have to love the game. I'm the youngest of four, and my brother, like the older one, uh, lives actually in Australia, but the rest of my family is in France, yeah. Since I already knew the States um, with like um, the house we had in Florida, um, it was I was not that scared of coming, because um, I knew about the culture and I knew about the people. The biggest difference was really just leaving home and my family because I'm really close with them. White Ball State, um, because it was one of the few schools with uh, that program in sports psychology and I just I just had a really good time talking with Coach Mullet um, on Skype and everything. I'm not like a big fan of working on one like um, part of your game. I just um, my biggest work is basically my, my confidence with my swing, um, with my potting stroke, um, and yeah, just, you know, just hit the ball is pretty much how I do it. <laughs> my putting is definitely a huge influence on my game. Um, if, I, like, if I feel good about my putting one day, then I'll just ha know I'll have a good score. And if I don't, like, I know I'm going to struggle, but... You know, that's golf. Now we heard her say that her confidence is in her swing and it seems that that swing has really been working for her. Yeah, it's definitely working for her. She's got two top 10 finishes so far this season for the Cardinals and Ball State as a team, they finished uh, first overall in back-to-back -back weekends. Pretty good. Well, like you said, Ashley, I'm not going to try to poke fun at you too much. I'm going to keep it at a minimum. But last month, Ashley said social media is big here at SportsLink and she's not lying. Yeah, we won't mention that comment very much, but uh, we know that social media is big. But now let's toss it on over to Pat with our newest segment, Sounds of the Game. Pat? Yeah, thanks, Ashley. Guys, today we continue with our Sounds of the Game segment where we pair up different SportsLink highlights with the call from SportsLink Radio. This month comes from Ball State's thrilling 30-24 to football overtime homecoming win over Western Michigan, presented by Robbins Apparel. Favoring the right hash of the 11, takes the snap, gives to Edwards. Edwards, a big hold of the five, the two, and scores! Touchdown, Jawan Edwards, 
An 11-yard carry, and this time the Cardinals do punch it in for six. Jawan Edwards from 11 yards down. It's Ball State six in Western Michigan, nothing. Takes the snap, gives to Scriven, who walks in. Touchdown, Western Michigan. So Scriven gets his fifth touchdown of the season. And two bring in shotgun. Three receivers set, two to the right, one to the left, and two tight ends. Takes the snap, it's a design QB run. Now he throws out of it, it's tipped, and tipped again, it's picked, all he has it. Now it came loose, it's still in the hands of a Cardinal. It came out of all his hands and fell into Patterson's hands. 29 to go in the second man. Tubergen takes the snap, pump fake going deep downfield, has a man wide open. It's caught, and Schaefer will score. Touchdown, Josh Schaefer. Need wide left, Jamil to wide to the right. When he takes the snap, gives to Edwards, dances, cuts left, makes a man missing a big hole to the 15, to the 10, to the 5. He's going to score. Touchdown, Jawan Edwards. A great run by Jawan. It was originally set to the right. Patiently waited and then darted left and scored. And that's a big TD for Jawan. He takes the snap, drops the throw, step, protection, look, throws to the end zone. It is caught, I think. Wow. Yes, Jamil Smith has it. Touchdown, Ball State. An incredible catch by Jamil and a great throw by Keith Wayne. Ben Tubergen takes the snap, drops, looks, throws over the middle, picks off. Tony Martin has it. He fumbles it. It's loose. It's still loose. And Western Michigan has it back. There, the ball down, kick up on the way, and it is good. good. Keith takes the snap, gives to Jawan. Cut. Left, right, to the 10, to the 8, still on his feet, to the 5, 2, 1, he will score! Touchdown, Jawan Edwards, and the Cardinals win on an epic run! Exhale, Muncy. 30 to 24, the Cardinals inexplicably do everything they can to let Western Michigan have a chance, and they win it in overtime on one of the best runs of the young sophomore Jawan Edwards' career, and it comes at, couldn't have come at a bigger time. And 30 to 24 is your final. The Cardinals, they're still not going to go under 500, at least yet, under the Pete Lembo era. They're 4 and 3. A thrilling victory it was. The Cardinals pull out another one at the wire, and more importantly, the first homecoming win for Ball State in four years. Well, Ball State Sports Link is your social media leader for all of Ball State athletics. Now let's look at some of our top tweets in BSU Sports over the past month. Our first tweet comes from football defensive line coach Chad Wilt. Coach says, proud of at Nate the Great 92, Mac West Defensive Player of the Week. Nate Ollie had a sack and a fumble recovery against CMU. Then from BSU Volleyball's Kara Bates, just beat undefeated BGSU in four. Best birthday ever. I love my team. Indeed, a great birthday present for Kara. Staying with women's volleyball, Lisa Scott tweeting at Sportslink's own CJ Allard. Steve Shondell celebrating our win tonight. I almost cried with excitement. Hashtag best moment ever. For men's golf, coach Mike Fleck. Second at Kennesaw to wrap up the fall season. Great group of young men. Very proud. Hashtag work to do. Hashtag staying relevant. Chirp, chirp. And finally, back to football from Coach Lembo. After that homecoming win you just saw, thanks to everyone that came out to the shoe and sat through the rain today. Ugly game, but our kids persevered. Let's enjoy it. Hashtag BSU. Josh, a thrilling win on homecoming like you saw. A big win recently over Central Michigan this past week. The Cards have now taken two in a row in football. Sure seems like the guys are enjoying it. Thanks, Pat. And it seems like every single game for this Cardinal team comes down to the wire. I was actually standing in the end zone against Western Michigan as they were driving down the field their fourth quarter, late in the fourth quarter. Ball State picks it off, somehow fumbles it. They pick it up. They, get, they end up kicking that 51-yard field goal to send it into overtime. And somehow Jawan Edwards finds a way to get into the end zone. Cardinals get a pretty big victory. Yeah, we've seen lots of very exciting games recently here at Ball State. And it'd be nice to get a blowout win at some point, but, you know, we're going to take a victory any way we can. Especially at this point in the season, the Cardinals will take a victory, like you said. Whether it's in the uh, first overtime or double overtime, Cardinals will take it. Well, I was able, actually able to walk around the tailgate outside the stadium for that game that you just saw against Western Michigan. And, Ashley, let me tell you, our students know how to celebrate and cheer on their Cardinals. Here's the sights and sounds of Ball State Homecoming Weekend, produced by Zach Hughes and myself, presented by WMDH. Homecoming's awesome. The tailgate section out here, it's like no other, especially the, the experienced tailgates. You gotta find one like this with some people that have been out here for a while, like that right there. 
It's Ball State spirit, you know? It's the best food, best drinks. It's the best out here. Same. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing more. You like it. What's your favorite part about tailgating? Milk Dad? Yeah. My favorite part about tailgating is hanging out with all the people I love. I've really uh, grown to like all these people that I'm with, and having a good time with them and conversing is one of my favorite parts. <laughs> I agree, getting to know everyone. Meeting people is yes, key. Yes, meeting people and like getting to know everyone here is probably yeah, the best part about tailgating. Yes. <laughs> I love seeing all my friends coming together and like everyone like that was alum like coming back and just having a great time. It's great coming back down here for the football game and mostly the people you get to see a lot of people I haven't seen for a while and friends, the kids, I've got a son here, so it's great seeing people having a good time. Favorite part's got to be the food and seeing people that I haven't seen in forever. Everybody comes back into town, so seeing people that are, you know, gone to Ball State and even that didn't go to Ball State that come in just for the tailgating, everybody comes for homecoming tailgate, it's the best. And you know, the students were crazy. I was out there. Even though the rain started after the first half of the game, people stayed out and supported, so it was great to see. Yeah, you got to give them credit, especially when it starts to downpour like it did. The fact that the students stuck around, especially for that overtime thriller, pretty good. Well, they had actually had a great turnout victory, and it's also a good time to get a victory on homecoming weekend. Great way to cap it off. And uh, Ashley, I got to ask, since it is past homecoming weekend, um, what was your favorite part? Uh, my family came down and we, we had a great time. We bought my little brother a new football jersey so he can support the Cardinals. We went out to eat, came to the tailgate field, saw all the excitement, got some good food, mine enjoyed the game. Mine would have to be probably coming back and seeing all the uh, SportsLink alumni like Joel Bragg and all those guys coming back. It's always good to see a familiar face. We miss them a lot here at SportsLink. And we always look forward to that weekend when we get to see all those guys And come we got to go us. onto the field for recognition, and that was great to bring everybody together. It's pretty cool. We gave a... Uh, Ben Wagner, the creator of our uh, third down trip show, our football show, and uh, gave, gave him some uh, recognition, which is well deserved. Very, very nice. Joe Gasser has been Joe Gasser has been leading the men's golf team all season. Growing up just 20 minutes away, Ball State was his obvious choice to continue playing. Although this is his final year with the team, Gasser says there may be more golf in his future. Here's his in focus story, produced by Andrew Boltzmeyer and myself. My name is Joe Gasser. I'm a senior. And I'm from Yorktown, Indiana. I started playing golf when I was real little, actually out here at Delaware Country Club. Uh, my dad bring me and my brother out here. The playing in my hometown is a little different, but it's also good at the same time. I see a lot of people I know, and they give me a lot of encouragement and praise for my good play, and even when I play bad, they cheer me up. I definitely mark all my golf balls the exact same. I put a black line and I put a red dot in between the titleist and number. Um, I'm very fidgety. Uh, I have a tee or a ball marker in my hand all the time and I'm always playing it with my hands. Um, I do a lot of waggles before I hit the golf ball because I uh, can't stand still. Um, it really helps me calm my nerves and everything else. I'm definitely not the best. So far, my biggest accomplishments are uh, shooting 69 at uh, Rich Harvest Farms, probably my best round of my college career. After I graduate from Ball State, I'm planning on uh, becoming an elementary school teacher. Uh, I'll probably put the clubs up for a while, then probably be a golf coach somewhere along the line. My experience at Ball State so far has uh, been a good one. Uh, I really like the coach even though I give them a hard time quite a bit. But uh, overall, I love all my teammates. Kind of asked for a better coach and better years at Ball State. Ashley, I'm still not sure what a, a waggle is, but I'm assuming it's that thing where he was bouncing the ball with his club. I mean, I know when I was a little kid, I was trying to do that. Didn't happen, but he's pretty good at it. Yeah, I'm not sure what it is either, but I mean, if it is the waggle, it seems to be working for him. He just finished his fall season with three top 10 finishes and two top three results. And the Cardinals are ranked right now 34th nationally according to Golf Week. Well, you saw earlier in the show what it was like with the students during the tailgate before games, but in this next story, we'll show you what it's like for the Cardinal alumni who come back for every football game, rain or shine, to root on the school they've grown to love. Chris Franco and myself have the story. It has become a symbol of Ball State game day. Perched along the side of the Cardinal Walk, a place of food, fans, and football. 
In 12 seasons, the sled hasn't missed a single home football game. You know, we tailgate and it's a great place to congregate for the game, but to us, it's all about Ball State and about Ball State football. I mean, you'll never see us at the sled once the game starts. We've got people from, we got, we got little kids, we've got, we've got young people, we've got old people, it's a friendly spot. That's kind of the tailgating community. Everybody's kind of, kind of pals when you're tailgating. So it's fun. Well, my husband and I both, we met here at Ball State in the 70s. And we remember, you know, before the Alumni Center was here, RVs used to park up by the stadium. And we would walk by, you know, as kids. And he said, then he goes, someday I'd like to have an RV. So we found this old RV that was uh, mauve and blue. From the eight, it's an 89, and I have friends from in Ohio who came up with the design for this. So they did the paint job on the outside, and then they also redid the inside for us too. But what's funny is the first game when we brought it here, truly Ed and I sat in it by ourselves, and I looked at him and said, "Did we make a mistake by doing this?" And he goes, "I don't care. I love Ball State, and we're, you know we're here." And it's just kind of grown, and it's it's a conversation piece, and we've met wonderful people as a result of this. Where you find Ball State football being played, usually the sled is not far away. Not only during home games, but on the road as well. We've never had an issue anywhere. We've taken it. Oh gosh, we've been to nearly every MAC school. We've been to Illinois, Purdue, Indiana, out of conference. We've been to a number of places, and. And again, everyone's very friendly. They want to come in, they want to see it. They're ex they think it's neat. I, I suppose the funniest thing about the RV is when, when we're coming to a game, whether it's here or away, when we're on the highway, um, you see people you know, coming up by us and they're looking and they're looking like, oh my gosh. But as soon as they pull up next to Ed driving, they look straight ahead. It's like we're invisible to them. If we're local, you get a lot of Ball State people, you get honks, thumbs up, but if we're traveling far distances, you get a lot of gawkers. When Ed goes to get gas, you know, to gas it up before a game, people will actually say, are you a Ball State fan? <laughs> what, what, what do you think, they rented this thing, you know? We've been fortunate enough to park along Cardinal Walk, and you know, for the players and a lot of people, their window, their frame of reference, um, the sled's always been here, so I don't know what, this sled means to Ball State, but Ball State means everything to us. We've said it's like the box will rot off before the mechanicals go. When the box rots off, I guess we're done. <laughs> but until that day, you can expect if it's game day in Muncie, the sled will be there. For Ball State Sports Link, I'm Chris Rankel. You know, it's awesome to see them come back after all these years. And they're not only here for the homecoming game, but they're here for almost every home game that we have and the amount of people that have joined them throughout the years mm -hmm. I mean it's impressive we need dedicated fans like that yeah, it, it's funny Chris and I have talked about this since we've done that story every single time when we walk past them they're always yelling and inviting us to get a drink or some food so they're great people they know how to have a good time now we're gonna switch gears toward field hockey although Marissa Wechter still has things to accomplish in her final season as a Cardinal her senior year has also been a time to reflect on four great years here at Ball State Here's her in focus story produced by Andrew Boltzmeyer and myself. Hi, I'm Marissa Lecter. I'm from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. I'm a senior communication studies major and I play midfield. Um, field hockey has been a really big part of my life. I've been playing since I was in elementary school. I came to Ball State because I really like the atmosphere here. I, like, I love the campus, I like the hockey aspect, and I like the academic aspect. It's really weird coming to a school where no one knows what field hockey is in this state. Everyone's like, field hockey, what's that? And no one knows and it's just like, it's really popular, I'm proud, I promise. As the center midfielder, I'm responsible for um, basically being on offense when my team's on offense and then dropping back on defense when my team's on defense. Um, before the game, I like to visualize. I just stand on the field and just kind of like visualize and visiting myself doing something great. And then it's really fun in the midfield. We all get together and we say something really funny. My favorite thing I like to do outside of hockey is I really like to bake. I like to bake cupcakes specifically, I guess, and cookie cake. I guess I'm really famous for my cookie cake. I love being at Ball State. I'm really sad this is my last year and I have to go because um, I just love being here. I love the school, my team. I like being in class and doing everything here. 
After I graduate, I plan on going back to Pennsylvania and looking for a job in maybe marketing or advertising. No, I wouldn't change anything about my experience. Field hockey, but I do know if you're smiling during the whole interview, you obviously love the sport you're doing. And she has a reason to smile because she has two goals for the team this season. She's obviously a big part of what the Cardinals are doing this year. Well, if you want to stay on top of everything Ball State Athletics, like us on Facebook, just search Ball State Sports Link. And don't forget, follow us on Twitter at BSU Sports Link. That's all the time we have for the October edition of Sports Links Be a Fan. But check us out online at ballstatesports.com slash sportslink for more stories about your Ball State athletes. You can catch us on WIPB across the state on Comcast Indiana and nationally on Fox College Sports. For our producer Kevin Thurman and all of us here at Ball State Sports Link, I'm Josh Blessing. I'm Ashley Reed. And we'll see you next month.